Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint, and today we're going to be talking about caring for avocados and citrus. And I'm here in Mission Viejo, California, here in um, Orange County. What we have here in front of us is actually an avocado of the Haas variety, and here's actually a label if you want to zoom in and take a look at it here. And it says Haas Avocado. Um, this is actually one of the most popular of the avocado varieties. And what I wanted to point out over here is it says under pollination, it says it's self-pollinating. This plant will bear fruit without another variety nearby. However, I've seen these same labels also being sold at Home Depot, as well as Lowe's and other nurseries where they said the avocado varieties need to be cross-pollinated in order to form fruit. And that's a mistake. What there's a lot of research out there. It talks about cross-pollination. I've done a video on this already. Um, if you research it under Ivy Organics on YouTube, and um, most trees will actually bear anywhere from five to twenty percent more fruit if they're cross-pollinated with other very related varieties. What's unique about the avocados specifically is that there's type A avocados and type B avocados, which flower at different times of the day. And by having a type A and a type B avocado within um, you know, one another, um, within the vicinity of one another, approximately anywhere from 15, 20, maybe even 30 feet apart, that the bees and the wind that will pollinate um, the trees will actually um, share the pollen between the trees and it'll increase fruit production by five to 20% is where most of the research is at. So we have a Haas avocado over here in front of us, which is character characterized as a type A avocado. And behind me, over here, is a Fuerte avocado, which is a type B avocado. So these two avocados will be pollinating each other and helping increase fruit production by anywhere from five to 20%. What I want So what I've um, discovered here for the homeowner of this avocado tree is it's actually burn that's actually happening to this tree. We visited this tree about six to eight months ago and we actually applied Ivy Organics in the color white as indicated by the lower bark. And as you can see, the bark is actually you know, doing quite well. If I can get a little bit closer, I'll point out. You can actually see that it's already budding. It's trying to create new branches. Um, the bark, the tree actually has the ability to actually breathe through these cuts in it. Um, unlike a latex paint or a gloss paint, um, it's not creating some impermeable membrane. Um, Ivory Organics is an organic paint. It needs to be applied and reapplied on average once a year. Um, so you can see that it's actually wearing away, but in the meantime, it's providing the tree with protection from sunburn, sun scald, um, and insects and rodents, as I'll show you on the can momentarily. But we're gonna go, and today we're actually gonna continue applying and, and protecting now these branches. If you zoom in over here, you'll actually see these, these branches are getting burnt from the sun. The same issue is not happening to the underside of the tree where it's not exposed to the sun. Same thing over here, here's another branch, same thing. Sunburn on the top, and then no damage on the underside of the tree. So what we're gonna do is try to protect these branches. We're trying to get this canopy to get stronger. We want this plant to get healthier, and we want this plant to create a canopy which will naturally shade these lower branches and ultimately the lower trunk. So what we're gonna do here today, and another thing I wanna um, share with you, which I'm gonna be doing before I start painting is, you'll notice that the um, owner actually installed these metal stakes next to the tree. These metal stakes absorb a lot of heat, and I've actually done videos where these metal stakes have in fact damaged the entire length of the avocado wherever these metal stakes leaned against the bark. I don't see any damage actually to this particular tree from the metal stakes, but when you actually stake a tree, be sure to use wood or a plastic stake and never metal as these will absorb too much heat and damage the living tissues of the plant. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is remove these stakes, and we're gonna replace it after we Finish painting. We'll remove that label for now and we'll reapply that later. So, what I have here to take care of this tree is um, Ivory Organics. It's a three in one tree guard paint. It says it's a natural tree trunk branch barrier protection against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. And this says um, for use on roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. 
And here we are again with this avocado, this Haas variety avocado. Um, avocados as well as citrus are known for actually um, cracking from exposure, from overexposure to sun. So the owner actually requested that we actually use a green variety, um, being that he felt like it was more natural and it fit his landscape better. Um, Ivory Organics is sold in green, brown, and white. White obviously offers the most reflection and the most protection against sun damage, but regardless of the colors, they all provide um, protection. The other thing too is I had this mix just before the video. The product comes in a bag like so, and the plastic paint, I mean the, the organic paint powder, it comes in a plastic bag such as this. I'll actually put a little bit in my hand so you can see what it looks like. So this here is the paint powder. And I've already applied it to water because it takes a few minutes for that to dissolve into, into the water. And then, and then you'll usually mix it. You're gonna add it to water. And then it also comes with this oil vial. And this oil vial actually has oils that actually help the plant um, resist insect damage as well as um, it makes the paint distasteful to any rodents that may be in the area that decided to gnaw on the tree to get the juices and the sugars out of the tree. So we just add that oil to the can as well. And then we're just gonna stir that. And you're gonna wanna stir it about every five to 10 minutes to make sure that the oil and the paint are both being applied to the tree. And then here we go. And now we're gonna start painting. The other thing I want to share is um, this paint actually goes on quite watery. If you added 50% of the recommended water, it would be a little bit more concentrated and it would be applied more like a paint. The product also doesn't stick too well to the new green tissues like the first year growth. So it may require a second coat. And I'm actually applying it to both the top and the bottom, mostly for cosmetic, but it really is just the top of the branch. You can actually see this is actually quite damaged if you look under here. This is all damaged um, living tissues. This, is, this would otherwise be green if it was more in the shade. Um, but all that is all dead wood um, as a result of the sun. So we're now giving it a chance to, to be protected from the sun so that it's not being challenged as much and not putting too much energy into just surviving. And instead it could put its energy towards putting out more leaves, more branches and more growth and hopefully we're gonna enjoy some fruit on this tree within the next year or two. Here's another branch that we can coat it. So I'm also being careful not to get this paint on the leaves. There is um, the Ivory Organics white paint. If you actually apply just one or two teaspoons of it, you can make a dilute spray. And um, so one to two teaspoons per gallon and actually use that as a spray. And you can actually spray the leaves on the hottest summer days in summer um, to protect the leaves from sunburn as well. So that would be a possibility. So you can see that we've pretty much protected what I consider the heart of the tree by painting the tree trunk We've protected the branches, and now the next thing we're gonna do is restake the tree as it's, um, I know that this particular area is quite windy. We're at the very top of the hill, um, and there's not much to, you know, not much around here to protect against wind resistance. So we're actually gonna restake it. I've got my stake here. Let me get my hammer. <clears throat> And then when we support it, you always want to tie your knot to the stake and not to the tree so that the tree won't be constricted. And I'll give you a couple of examples in just a minute on another tree that's being constricted. So now we just loop it around. We're going to keep some space between the tree and the stake.
and then we're done. So this tree has now been protected with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint. I want to show you um, one other example um, of things that this um, organic paint can be used for. Come and follow me here. Just keep running. So now we're here in front of an Oro Blanco grapefruit variety. Of all of the grapefruits, if you're thinking about bringing a grapefruit into your garden, oh, for real? If that's the case, then I gotta fix it, hold on. Can you actually touch me? No, just keep running it. Gone? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You know how to splice them. Yeah, that's easy. But just don't stop it because I hate cutting and pasting. So here we are now in front of an Oro Blanco grapefruit variety. And of all of the grapefruits, if you're thinking about bringing a grapefruit into your garden, this is my favorite. It's a white grapefruit, and here's some details, and here's the label as well. Um, so Oro Blanco grapefruit. When you bring the, um, a citrus into your garden, you gotta know if you're gonna be purchasing a standard, a semi-standard or semi-dwarf, or a dwarf um, variety, and that's gonna control the height of your tree. So don't just think you can pick up an Oro Blanco and expect to have an Oro Blanco 15 or 20 foot tall tree. You gotta make sure you pick up a standard if your goal is to get something that's gonna be tall, as the dwarfs can sometimes um, be anywhere from five to, you know, five to three feet. Tree size over here, it says 15 to um, 25 feet. It fruits between December and spring, and it says to space your trees about 15 to 20 feet. Um, when you actually have a citrus, and we're talking about cross-pollinating, um, at the beginning of the video between a Haas and a Fuerte being a type A and a type B. By having a citrus in your garden, you don't need to have two Oro Blanco grapefruit trees in your garden. Um, one will actually be self-fertile, but by having a second one, you'll actually increase again your fruit yield, your fruit quality, um, and your fruit quantities by just having another citrus variety. It doesn't necessarily have to be a grapefruit. Having having an orange or having a lemon or having anything within the citrus variety can also cross pollinate with a um with a grapefruit and it doesn't affect the flavor or the um the taste by cross pollinating it actually just affects the seeds that are within it um so if you were to plant the seeds it may be something that's a cross with something else in your garden um but this here is an oro blanco it's a tested and known excellent variety of grapefruit it's um anywhere from three to zero seeds per fruit and again, it's one of the sweetest, even more sweet than any of the pink or the red varieties of grapefruit. And hence, we um, introduced the Oro Blanco grapefruit into our garden. What I want to show you here is um, the owner actually planted this plant. And again, here's a metal stake. And we're opposed. And here's his little um, itsy bitsy spider if you want to make it into the video. I don't know if you see that over here. Um, but we like having an organic garden. The spider actually keeps the aphids off. It keeps all the other pests um, that we want out of the garden. Um, but we have this Oro Blanco grapefruit that was installed with the stake that came from the nursery. This here, once you actually plant your um, citrus in your garden or any other tree that has stakes on them, you want to remove those immediately once you bring those into your garden. Um, as these ties are actually on usually too tight, it's usually there only to support the tree and make sure it's upright until you bring it home. But once you bring it home, you need to take this off and restake it. So that's going to be the first thing that we're going to do here today is, is remove this so that the plant can for the first time since we've installed it about six months ago is breathe it can finally be free as these ties were so tight that it was actually constricting the flow of water and saps um, in and out of the tree the other thing too that um, i'm starting to notice is it's starting to sprout the plant's doing so healthy that it's wanting to grow all over um, since we're trying to grow this as a tree variety you're going to want to remove all of these lower suckers um, so these you can actually pretty much just pinch them off and the other thing I want to share with you is, is um, some damage that I see over here. So if you take a look over here, it looks like for whatever reason, the bark actually split in this point. This opening is now an entryway for wood destroying organisms and much more. So wood destroying organisms being termites and beetles. But the other risk is also bacteria and viruses that can get in here and actually harm the living tissues of your tree. So we're going to actually seal that again with Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint. The other thing I want to show you that's also um, at risk um, for the tree is this graft union. So this here is the rootstock 
this is actually the um, the roots that actually control the height of the plant. So if this was grafted on a dwarf root stock, it would actually control the oro blanco tree to only grow three to five feet, or a semi dwarf tree it would be capped at about ten to twelve feet. But being a standard root stock, that's what's allowing this oro blanco reach its maximum heights of fifteen to twenty five feet. But if you come around the back, I want to show you, um, I want to show you this root stock and and some damage that we're gonna also protect with the um, Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint. If you can see this over here in the video, you'll actually see that this here used to be the original tree. So this is the rootstock. They grafted the Oro Blanco tree off on the side of the rootstock. Again, we've got another sucker shoot, which we're gonna remove. And so this here is the Oro Blanco variety, but this here is still gonna take about another year or two um, to heal. As the bark, you can see it's starting to callus over the wound. This will ultimately close up and um, and be protected. But in the meantime, this is again an entryway point. And you've sometimes seen trees that have topped over and they'll be hollow on the inside. And this is the reason why insects have got in there and have started eating the inside living, um, the inside the inside of the tree, which is not necessarily living. The only living part of the tree is just underneath the bark. That's the cambium layer that, that moves the sugars and the waters through the tree. But otherwise, this is just dead wood in there that the, that the insects can get into and start eating. Um, and hollowing out the tree. So what we're gonna do here with this Ivory Organics is we're just gonna seal that hole over here. And then if you wanna come around and see the other wound as well, we'll actually patch that and then I'm just gonna seal the rest of the tree. So here's the other spot that's actually exposed and we're gonna seal that carefully. Make sure that all gets filled in. I'll dip that again one more time to make sure we get all the way in there. There it goes, that fills in. And now we're just gonna coat the whole tree. Citrus, again, is very prone to sunburn. Um, and by coating it, we're gonna keep the plant cool in these summer months that are ahead of us. This is now the month of June, and we're already expecting close to 100 degrees this weekend. So now the plant will remain cool and focus more so on flowering fruiting and growing rather than just trying to stay alive and surviving the heat. So you can see here, this is actually our first coat. And if you can zoom in, and like I said, on the first year of growth, you can see that it's too waxy and sometimes the paint won't hold on with the first try. So we're gonna wait for this to dry another 10 or 15 minutes and we'll add a second coat. Uh, but again, we've got about 70 to 90% coverage. And this here is gonna help produce um, a lot of sun, sunblock protection and take a look at all the flowers in here now. Take a look at all these flowers over here. So it's supporting hundreds, if not thousands of flowers um, that we're gonna get to enjoy the fruits of um, within the upcoming year. So I hope you found this video informative. If so, be sure to like it. Most importantly, subscribe down below so you can enjoy all the other um, Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint videos. Again, thanks for watching and happy gardening.